God of War Ragnarok is an upcoming action-adventure game that has been developed by Sony's Santa Monica Studio and published by Sony. The game is the sequel to 2018's God of War, and I want to start by saying Ragnarok is not the final title, and I'm using it as a placeholder based off teases Sony has released for the title up to this point, so it could change, so be aware of that moving forward. The game is set to be released in 2021, and will follow the story of Ragnarok or the End of Days. Let's break down the secret messages, symbols, release, and more. As always, all the sources will be linked in the description down below, so make sure to check those out and support those original writers. And with that out of the way, let's get into everything we know about God of War Ragnarok. Let's start with the ending of 2018's God of War that sets off the events in the sequel and Ragnarok itself. I don't want to get into too much depth about the ending and get bogged down by the details, and this will serve more as a reminder to fans who have already played the game, so if you haven't played the game yet, make sure to check that out and play the story, and I will include a spoiler warning right now for those of you who haven't if you don't want anything spoiled for you. Okay, so if you're still here, the game ends with Kratos and his son killing Baldur. His mother Freya watches his death and promises revenge on Kratos, so not only will her revenge play a role in the upcoming title, but the death of Baldur is the inciting incident for Ragnarok to begin. After they kill him, Kratos and his son see a mural at the end of the game that shows not only the past events and current events of the game leading up to this point, but after the sun walks out, Kratos sees a mural which seemingly shows the future. And the mural itself is up for interpretation and the community hasn't decided definitively what it means. Some have speculated this could be the continuing cycle of death between father and son, or the son killing the father, or something completely different. And this will for sure be something that is answered in the upcoming title. The last part that you need to know about the ending is the time jump. We move forward three years after the events of the original game, after Kratos and his son move back home, and the Great Winter has started, which begins after the death of Baldur. This weather change is prophesized before the events of Ragnarok and is something else that leads up to it, so we needed a time jump so we can get closer to the events of the end of the world. The scene continues on as Thor shows up, and the final scene ends with Kratos asking him what he wants. Speculation has pointed to them potentially working together to prevent the end of the world in the sequel, because in most interpretations, Thor does play a part in Ragnarok and the prevention of it. The time jump is also most likely where the next game will start, so expect some sort of time jump right at the start of the game, and don't expect it to start right where the last game ended. Instead, we will get this three years probably, so we're closer to the end of this winter. This whole scene is only a vision by Atreus, but what makes it really cool is though Great Winter is supposed to last three years, the original God of War came out in 2018 and that's when we kill Baldur, and with the sequel coming out in 2021, in our world it has been three years past, so it would be cool if they build off this and do a three year time jump to show that the events of the Great Winter have happened, and now we're going to start right off at the events of Ragnarok. So it's something that a lot of fans have speculated about and pointed to as the fact that a 2021 release date was not just by happenstance and the team did it on purpose to tie a lot of these time jumps and ideas together. And that's kind of what you need to know about the God of War ending moving forward for the sequel. Then we can move into some of the teases about multiple sequels. It started back in June of 2016 via the publication Level Up. They were invited to a closed door presentation with the game director of 2018's God of War, and were told by the director that God of War will not be the last game we see Kratos. The same idea of having multiple games that 2018's God of War wasn't going to be a one-off and was rebooting the series, was backed up further in 2018 when the game director did another interview, this time with Jason Schreier at Kotaku, and they discussed the future of the God of War series. Schreier asked, quote, So how much of the future game plan do you have mapped out in your head? And Corey, the game director, responded saying, Five games. As the conversation continued, Schreier asked if this will take 25 years to make, because the first game's development time was for five years, and Corey said no, that they will make the next games faster. His quote said, 
I think this one, a big portion of the five years, was we had to start from scratch. We had a core engine, but we really redid a lot of stuff. The previous God of War games, when we went from God of War 1 to God of War 2, the core engine was there, and aside from the fact that the combat design team told me, we're just going to do a little rewrite of the combat engine, don't worry, in a couple of months we'll be back online. A year later, we finally built our first chapter of God of War 2. It was the most stressful time ever because they kept saying just another month. It's like doing construction on your house, don't worry, another week, another week. On this one, everything really needed to be redone because we had just torn the engine apart in so many different ways that when we finally brought the team together, everyone realized, okay, this is where it needs to be. So even when you see E3 2016, the rendering engine wasn't there. The lighting engine was half there, the atmospheric engine was half there, the core mechanics were there, but a lot of what we were streaming and loading, everything was still getting worked on. And figuring out how we were going to get it logistically to work, we knew what we wanted. We just didn't know technologically how we were going to get it in the right order. And this definitely makes it sound like they are going to continue the franchise, and it will happen faster each time, because once again, as they say, the engine is there, a lot of the heavy lifting is done, so what's left for them is just continuing the story, making new assets, and continuing on combat and reiterating it, and not so much building everything from the ground up. And it sounds like it will now only be a few years apart at a maximum for these titles, which we end up learning is very true. I do want to continue on and say about the five games that Corey talked about. He slightly clarified the comment on Twitter when the quote started to circulate and a lot of fans were excited that we're going to see five more God of War games and the series was never going to end. And on Twitter, Corey said, quote, To be honest, five games would literally kill me. You can rest assured the reality is going to be more measured than the speculation in the Kotaku discussion. And the takeaway here should be the team is planning sequels, but the exact number is really up to the team. And if the community and fans keep playing and purchasing the titles, it sounds like they will continue on as long as fans want it. After that, we can move on to the tease and secret message that we were given before the official reveal. Both teases happened in April of 2019, and it started with a God of War theme that was released for the PS4. The theme itself showed Kratos and his son on a boat, and everything seems relatively normal, but if you look closer on the boat itself, there are Nordic runes. Of course, it was translated by a community member on Reddit, and said the runes roughly translate to Ragnarok is coming. The same message was found in a thread of tweets by the game director Corey. He started the thread on the 21st of April, and if you take the first letter from every tweet, it also spells out Ragnarok is coming. And when asked about it, he just kept saying he was referencing Thor Ragnarok, just as a joke, when we know, obviously, God of War, between the teases at the end of the game, and now these teases that Ragnarok is coming, the team had already started to lay the groundwork in 2019 for what they wanted to do. Next, we can jump forward again to September of 2020. The game was finally confirmed by Sony with a teaser trailer at the PlayStation 5 showcase. The teaser itself creates a new symbol that is used in the God of War logo, and eight runes are on the outside. Then the text shows up on screen saying Ragnarok is coming, and the final screen gives the year 2021, which once again backs up what we've heard about the game's release schedule and that they will release faster than normal because from 2018 to 2021 is only three years compared to the five of the original. The symbols themselves were decoded by fans and once again spell Ragnarok. And most community members assumed the game would be a PlayStation 5 exclusive given the last entry was a PlayStation 4 exclusive and this title is a massive marketing push for Sony's next console. But the CEO of PlayStation, Jim Ryan, did an interview with Telegraph and discussed some of the moves and motivations behind some of PlayStation's recent decisions. And during the interview, God of War Ragnarok was brought up and Ryan was asked if he could confirm whether or not God of War Ragnarok would be a PlayStation 5 exclusive. He said, quote, Sorry, I've got nothing to say about that today. And this could mean a few different things. It could mean the company is still deciding what they want to do, if they want to launch the game on PlayStation 5 first and then eventually release it on PlayStation 4 later down the road. It could mean a potential concurrent PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 launch. Or if you want to get really ambitious, it could potentially even mean a PC release, 
similar to what happened with Horizon Zero Dawn, which was another massive title for PlayStation that they brought over to PC. And this is kind of just where the speculation could go on and on, or the game could end up just being a PlayStation 5 exclusive, we just really don't know, but the comment itself has brought up a lot of speculation and the community isn't sure where we stand on this. Some fans who have the PlayStation 5 are hoping it will be an exclusive so they take full advantage of the hardware, so we're just gonna have to wait and see. Let's close out by discussing a few of the leaks that have circulated around the title. The first leak comes from IMDB, which is a movie website that contains release dates and production statuses, I bet most of you know what it is, and I think that most of you know where this story is going. But on the IMDB website, they have a God of War Ragnarok page, and on this page it listed the release date for the United States as the 5th of February 2021 which seemed ambitious and slightly early considering we've still only seen a teaser for the game, and of course the news started to circulate among not just God of War fans but general gaming audiences and blew up a lot on Twitter, so much so that the game director Corey responded to a post about the leak on Twitter and said Ragna what? Never heard of it. Which is a roundabout way I took it as denying the leak, and once again reminding fans that the game might not be called God of War Ragnarok. So yes, the game is still coming in 2021, but no, we still don't have a release date and it doesn't seem like this February 5th release date has any credibility to it. And the final leak comes from the YouTube channel More Is Not Dead, who has a mixed track record when it comes to insider information, but it is important to say they were correct about the God of War Ragnarok reveal, and the 2021 release window before the announcement, so they have good information in the past when it comes to this game specifically. So even if their other sources are mixed, it sounds like their Sony sources might be more legit. But he continues on saying that Sony's original plan was to show the gameplay demo for God of War Ragnarok at the September State of Play showcase instead of the teaser trailer, but Sony decided at the last minute to hold off on the gameplay reveal due to the fact that they saw the Halo Infinite gameplay demo and decided they really didn't need to show off their game yet. They didn't feel like they were being pressured to, and the competition wasn't there for them. The channel itself speculates this could be due to the fact that Sony doesn't need any more hype, they already can't keep up with the current demand of PlayStation 5 consoles, so there's no need to show off God of War Ragnarok and get more people excited for a game on a console they can't buy. He closed out by saying there is a gameplay demo that has been ready for a while, and he said he had heard discussions Sony was even possibly considering showing off the demo at the Game Awards, which we know did not end up happening, but I would expect seeing that gameplay demo somewhat soon, because the more they hold on to it, the longer they can't get pre-orders and things going for the title. So I would say if they have it ready, we're probably going to see it sooner rather than later. So what should we expect for this game? The game is coming soon regardless of the leaks and rumors. I tend to believe there is a gameplay demo the team is waiting to show off, most likely sometime early next year. We still don't even know what the official title is for the game, and Sony's really holding all the cards about this title close to their chest in terms of title, gameplay, and release. But it's mostly because they aren't required to build hype. I bet they will show off the game early to mid-2021, and around 6 months after that reveal they will release the title, which gives them time to build up pre-orders and let marketing work for the game. It's not going to be a direct release, most likely considering past release schedules. And that for the most part is everything we know about God of War Ragnarok. I know a lot of people are excited about this title, including myself, and luckily we don't have too much longer to wait till we get to see the game. Make sure to like and share this video, subscribe for weekly gaming news, and I will see you guys in the next one.